Oh, that's the coolest thing ever. Oh. That is so cool. Uh, bad day at sea. Today, we're diving into Ultim 9085, specifically Thermax PEI 9085 filament from 3DX Tech. Now this is one of those high performance materials that's trusted in aerospace, automotive, and other industrial applications. And we're gonna walk through what it is, where it's used, how it prints, and why you might wanna use it on your own projects. So what exactly is Ultim 9085? Ultem is the trade name for polyether image, or polyethermide, or PEI, originally developed by General Electric's plastics division in the early 1980s. Today, it's actually produced by Sabic, and 9085 is a specific grade of Ultem, widely recognized for its strength, flame resistance, and aerospace certification, specifically UL94 V0. So here's a really interesting aspect. Ultim 9085 is actually a blend of PEI and polycarbonate. This combination enhances the material's properties in several ways. So first, you get improved flow properties. The polycarb reduces the viscosity of the blend, which enhances its flow characteristics. This makes the material much more processable, which is especially beneficial in both injection molding and 3D printing. It also enhances the impact resistance, giving it increased toughness and ductility reducing the brittleness that we typically see with pure, plain PEI or Ultim 1010. Now in filament form, which you can of course buy over at visionminer.com materials, on our 22 IDX printer it delivers super clean, very strong, very reliable prints, and we highly recommend it for a lot of customers' applications. So applications. Let's talk about that. Where is it actually used? Let's just take a look at the real world for a second. This material has been around for 40 plus years and it's already flying and driving and working hard in many industrial environments. For example, Airbus actually uses it to 3D print cabin parts for the A350. Brackets, ducts, interior panels. Now all these parts really need that FST rating. BAE Systems prints custom jigs and fixtures in their assembly lines. So instead of machining metal, they get lightweight, rigid tooling that's ready overnight and can handle high temperatures. Boom Supersonic is using parts in their XB-1 jet. Things like uh, drill blocks and flight grade components stating that it's light, it's strong, and it passes, again, the aerospace flame standards. General Motors has tested it for under the hood components like brackets and routing guides because it holds up in the hot specifically vibration-heavy environment. Volkswagen also, they use it on their factory floor to make tooling and jigs, even some interior parts, which cuts costs and saves a significant portion of time. Ford even uses it for their HVAC ducting prototypes on their vehicle development processes. They can quickly print working parts that can be tested right on the car without any delay. Siemens prints electronics enclosures and machine covers, especially when flame resistance and electrical insulation is critical. And of course, NASA, they've tested Ultim 9085 for aerospace fixtures and thermovac environments to simulate deep space where outgassing and strength really, really matter. So yeah, basically it's out there already doing a ton of serious work. So let's get into the TDS, the technical data sheet, some basic specs. We've got a tensile strength of around 54 megapascals with a tensile modulus of 2050 to 2200 MPa a flexural strength of 90 MPa, a flexural modulus of 2170 MPa, a glass transition temp of 186 Celsius with a heat deflection temperature at 0.45 megapascals, 158 Celsius, and of course the FST rating on UL94 V0. Basically really strong, very heat resistant, flame safe, but what really makes this special? So here's a quick overview of what really sets Ultim 9085 apart. It's got excellent thermal properties. It's inherently flame resistant with low smoke and low toxicity. It's got excellent dimensional stability. This is huge in 3D printing and in the field. So it doesn't warp and creep under heat like a lot of other materials. It's hydrolytically stable for long-term durability in moisture and you get really good chemical resistance against things like fuels, oils, diesels, hydrocarbons, solvents, acids, and more. Its electrical properties are also super consistent, which is very good for electronics or enclosures and high voltage application in solar and other areas. Another cool thing is it's actually relatively affordable for what it is. So it's about 
uh, around 220 a kilo, or you can grab a 500 gram spool for about 145 bucks if you just want to test it out. Now, one of the unique perks of 9085 is that it prints really well and pretty darn easy. Unlike a lot of the other high temp, high performance materials we sell here at Vision Miner, 9085 is one of my favorites because it's super easy to print as long as you have the right equipment, like our 22 IDEX in the back here. On the 22, it prints clean, it's got great interlayer adhesion, and the surface quality is especially fantastic. It's actually got like a sort of pearlescent sheen to it. We've done stuff like ducting and brackets and covers and closures, jigs, fixtures, this little clamp for the 3D printing nerd, go check out that video. But they're all super clean, they're easy to print, and they come right off the machine ready to use. Here's a Benchy that we just printed yesterday, and I said use the default profile. Don't modify anything, don't slice it, don't change anything, don't add cooling fan for the chimney, even though we know it's gonna melt up there, and it came out next to perfect, except for, of course, the chimney. Now, it's thermal mass thing, so we could just add a tiny little bit of cooling fan, or if you printed multiples, literally if it had one second of time for that thermal mass to cool, you wouldn't see that at all, it'd be perfect. Now, this is all stuff that we teach you in these videos, like how to use the 22, slicing high temp parts, using the, these materials on our machines, and if you have a machine, we're always here to help you. We've got a dedicated USA-based support team right here. So no calling overseas, and we're usually pretty quick about it, especially if you call. So what do you really need to print it? Let's talk exactly the specs that you need on your printer to be able to print this stuff. You need an extruder that goes up to at least 390 Celsius, a bed temperature of at least 140, 160 or more is better, and a heated chamber at least 90 C. Ideally 140 uh, for really big, thick parts. Now your nozzle size, you can go you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8. You can go a whole range. The layer height's the same, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2. We normally print at 0.2. As for drying, you want to dry it for at least four hours at 120 C. Now that is important to note, you must dry this filament. If you don't, your prints are gonna come out terrible. The moisture is gonna get in and mess with your layers and all the surface finish, and it's just, it's just a bad time, so dry it. Now we do sell a drying kit over at visionminer.com slash dry kit. It'll keep all your high temp filaments dry, it'll keep your prints consistent, and it saves a ton of headaches. So that's the basic rundown with Ultim 9085, but let's actually go do some testing on this material. Let's pass it on over to Cole, and let's put some of these parts through their paces. So we're starting off pretty simple. We have made these bars that are printed both in the X and Y and Z axis, and we test them on our UTM. So let's go over and start. Oh, the UTM, universal testing machine. How I love the... You can look at a part and think you can tell how strong it might be given the properties of the material, but it's not until you actually test it and, and see if it's repeatable that you know that your part is gonna perform to its ultimate capability. So that is exactly why we've spent the money to have this beautiful machine here. This verifies our data and ensures that our parts are as strong as they can possibly be. So here you can see the part being slowly stretched and eventually breaking right about there. Yep, now let's take a look at this under the microscope and see exactly how and where it failed and at least figure out what we can from this data. This is interesting. This is why I'm so glad we have this digital microscope. Let's look exactly at how this failed. But first, one thing I thought was really neat, I didn't realize how transparent this, I've used this material for the longest time, but you can see the infill pattern through it. And this is four walls. Four walls, four top, four bottom, 25% rectilinear infill is how, is how we're doing these, with the exception of these torsion bars, which are printed solid. I wonder why, what I'm trying to do here with this microscope and why we got it initially is to figure out exactly, not just how, but why it failed and what we can do better. I guess that's how you would glue it back together and why it failed right there. I mean, this is a pretty long stick. This particular bar is the X and Y, right? So that's the easier one to do. It's definitely the easier one to print, but now let's look exactly what happened to the Z specimen. Right along a layer line, just like you would expect right at the interface. 
between where the jaws were clamping and, and the rest of the part is very clean break, but that's exactly what I would have expected. So nothing crazy to me there, but in the X and Y specimen, I did think it was interesting what kind of pattern it created when it sheared. And I don't know if you guys have any, you know, thoughts as to what you're seeing there, share it with me, because part of my job is figuring out why it's breaking the way it is. If you guys really want to get your prints tuned in, I highly recommend getting one of these microscopes. You don't need a fancy one, but to actually see what's going on with your parts at the layer to layer level makes a huge difference in being able to tune. Now that we've looked at that under the microscope, we are transitioning to what we call the vice quick break. And you're not going to get an actual measured value out of this, but it's just kind of for demonstration. So I'm going to take one of our XY sticks. I'm going to basically bend this until it fails. So let's take a look at what I bet this is going to go pretty far, but here we go. I'm going to go slow. Oh my gosh. Come on. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, here you go. That's why this stuff is crazy. Let's get it to fail. Come on. There, okay. So we had some deformation there. In the wise words of one of my heroes, Adam Savage, the difference between science and screwing around is if you write it down. And while we're not going to be writing anything down, we will inspect it under a microscope, and that seems pretty scientific to me. So let's see what happened to our pretty piece of ultum here. I'm expecting to see some discolorate. Yep, discoloration where it failed. Probably, oh, you can see warping as well. Interesting. Golly, that's pretty. You have like this pearlescent effect. You can see the layer interfacing here, but this pearlescent effect is so pretty. And is there discoloration where there was stress? A little bit, yeah. But overall, I'm impressed. It looks like you just unzipped it. Very cool. Now comes pretty much my favorite test, which is the torque test. This is printed solid and we have our digital gauge here and we're going to see exactly how much stress it takes before this shears in some sort of way. And then we'll inspect how it shears. I have a feeling compared to Peck, this is going to, it might not get as high of a number, but it's not going to break. I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Here we go. Am I getting a value? Yeah, let's go. Oh boy, that wasn't good. Eh, 1.4. That is very weak. It shouldn't be that weak. Those were supposed to be solid and they're not. So maybe we'll do some, you know, camera magic and, and, and. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with some fully solid 9085. Let's get those numbers. What do we get? What do we get? 2.6. Do it again. Now let's try it nice and slow. Two point four. This is future Cole handing it back to you, past Cole. What took man from being a mere animal? to the civilized beast we are today. Some may argue math, some may argue numbers, which is math. Some may argue tools, nay, tis fire. Now, let's see how Ultim does with fire. Here's a little spoiler, it's gonna do really well. Boom. Watch what happens to the smoke. Gone. Self-extinguishing and very low. When you light it on fire, it puts itself out and it stops smoking very quickly. And that is exactly why it's being used in aircraft around the world, including the military. Well, a piece of information I learned was that there, the, the, the Air Force allowed its first non 
structural piece of Ultim to be used, you know, ubiquitously among the C5 Galaxy for uh, latrine covers. So it's literally used as a toilet seat. I don't know why your toilet would catch on fire, but it's none of my business. So this already has a break in it. So we'll see what actually happens when we hit this obvious weak point with more fire. Five, six. Stop smoking. Now that was well and truly on fire. Wow, it's going to be so cool under the microscope. But I'll let it cool down a little bit. But what I'm curious to see is what's behind all of this carbon. Wow. It's soft at the joint there. But what you'll see is most of it is still there. You'd expect most of the material to be gone. But look at this. That's what happened. That's gross, too. I got I to gotta be honest with you guys. I didn't think this would be so gross. Everything is gross here. Yep. Oh, that's pretty. That's not gross, that's pretty. I can't believe how much of the material is still intact. It's just, it's just the uh, superficial surfaces that burn off, really. Let's see what this looks like when it burns under the microscope. That's so cool, I'm gonna do it from the top. Nah, we gotta keep going. Let's see what happens. Wow. That is some sci-fi stuff right there. Oh, this is the best job ever. So I'm gonna make the ultimate sacrifice for you guys and torch this beautiful Ultim Benchy. But let me tell you guys a little secret. This benchy wasn't hard to make because we used the 22 IDEX and this is the default profile. It's high temp. There's a myth that you can't use fan on high temp, but you can. And that's why you watch us, so we can teach you this stuff. But this is the default profile for Ultim 9085 printed on the 22. And I'm gonna destroy it with fire. Shiver me timbers, here we go. Batten down the hatches, right? <laughs> We're going to send this guy to Davy Jones' locker, <laughs> right? Okay. Let's see what all this scuttlebutt is about with Ultima 9085. Ready, set, go. Oh, that's the coolest thing ever. Oh. What a monstrosity. That is so cool. Uh, bad day at sea. The water couldn't put it out, but the Ultim sure did. Put what, the fire? Yeah. That is otherworldly. That's alien-like. That was a little bit of fun, no science there, but I thought you guys might enjoy that. This is just a very small portion of the test we're gonna do. A lot more serious ones. The Benchy was just for fun, but if you enjoyed what you saw today and our testing and, and the data we got from our UTM and inspecting it under a microscope, please subscribe, like, because you're gonna be getting a lot more of this kind of content coming from us here at Vision Miner. Now, if you'd like to win this disgusting, but also very cool Benchy, most liked comment on this video, and we will send this to you, even if you don't want it we're sending it to you. We'll find you and we'll send it to you. I had a lot of fun with this, guys, and I'm looking forward to doing more of this. And actually, this is a little example. We're gonna be having a lot more fun with this. And we're taking this way past what you've seen today with very in-depth measurements, details, testing. And I think we're the only channel that exists that does this kind of stuff. So subscribe because from here on out, it's gonna be a wild ride. I'm Cole with Vision Miner. I'll see you next time.